Ladies and gentlemen, happy Labor Day. Um, you know, I do not know many of us know the history of the labor movement. There's some workers in Australia, 167 years ago, demonstrated and they were agitating instead of working from sunrise to sunset, they'd be allowed uh, at least to work for eight hours and that challenge was taken up uh, um, across the seas in Chicago and uh, the their demonstrations were met with heavy police brutality <laughs> which had the opposite effect I think that sounds familiar uh, even so those who go to celebrate workers um, day must also know that these things over time have not come in easy. It took people's uh, uh, struggling to get to where we are. Until then, uh, in American society at that time, 167 years ago, the issue was between capital and labor. And of course, as an, an independent country, we then, um, in 1963, uh, decided to be part of the international labor movement and therefore we always celebrate uh, May Day as a matter of uh, of belief and uh, us in Azumio we we believe this is very important a very important day and therefore I want to take this opportunity to call on our leader the Honorable Raila Molo Dinga to come and and make a statement um, so thank you for coming Maybe at the end of it, one or two questions. Thank you. So, members of the media, good afternoon. Uh, let me take over from where Steve has left it. Uh, today is a very important day internationally. It's the, the International Labor Day. The day for the workers all over the world. It's a day when workers commemorate the struggle that they have waged over the years to improve the working and living conditions of the people. And today is taking place against a background of serious distress among the workers of Kenya. But I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all our workers for their resilience and their endurance. And I just want to urge them to continue to unite because I think it was Karl Marx who once said the workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains. So um, one would have expected today that um, Workers would have gotten something. Uh, unfortunately, uh, nothing has happened to the workers, uh, basically because of uh, the lack of concern by those who at the moment have the responsibility to manage affairs of our country. 
We have a statement to make today, and this is on two subjects that we are addressing. This statement is on Shakahola massacre and protest rallies. We called you here today to make a brief statement on two issues. First, the Shakahola cult massacre, and secondly, the protest rallies planned for tomorrow. Yesterday, Honorable William Ruto announced plans to set up a judicial commission of inquiry to probe the Shakahola cult deaths. The regime also declared war on our protest activities planned for tomorrow, and they have repeated it today. Ruto's announcement on Shakahola underscores part of the problem we are facing as a country with the Kenya Kwanzaa regime. Ruto knows, Ruto does not seem to know that the concept of a judicial commission of inquiry appointed by a president is unconstitutional in Kenya since the year 2010. Under the 2010 constitution and its entrenchment of separation of powers, the exercise of judicial power is only as provided under Article 1 and Chapter 10, which provides as follows, and I quote, 1. The people have delegated their sovereignty of judicial power to only the judiciary and the independent tribunals established under the Constitution. Two, only Parliament can establish a subordinate court or an independent tribunal through an Act of Parliament. Three, only Parliament can determine the jurisdiction and functions of a court or independent tribunal. Four, it is also now the law as determined by our courts that only the Judicial Service Commission can determine who would be employed to serve in such a tribunal. Five, indeed, Section 13 of the Commissions of Inquiry Act is very clear that an inquiry shall be de deemed to be a judicial proceeding. This makes it an, an absolute preserve of the judiciary under our Constitution. A president, unlike the past, no longer has power to make any decision on the Constitution of a court or an independent tribunal, nor who sits in judgment in such a court or independent tribunal. Yet again, Mr. Ruto is trying to undermine and overthrow the Constitution. We wish to state as follows. One, the matter of Shakahola and the growth of cult activities in the nation. Mr. Ruto is as much a suspect as is all the cult pastors from Shakahola and beyond. He owes the people of Kenya an explanation before he purposed to be trying to solve the problem. Two, the so-called pastors are the people who set up the so-called sanctuary at Ruto's former official residence in Karen as the deputy president. They did not stop there. These so-called pastors proceeded to deliver prophecies and promise miracles about how Ruto would perform as a president. Three, these cultic pastors were among the people who supposedly sanctified State House when Ruto arrived there, pretending to be 
holier than, than every other Kenyan. They proceeded to pro prophesy how great his regime would be. For these so-called pastors have organized mega prayer rallies attended by so-called prayer warriors that include Mr. Ruto, Mr. Rigadi Gachagua, and their spouses, supposedly to sanctify the land. They ended up defiling the land. Five, these so-called pastors aided the introduction of mandatory fasting that started in 2015 at the DP's residence in Karen, and which have been carried over to State House, where everyone is compelled to fast every Wednesday, regardless of their faith, effectively making State House essentially a Shakahola annex. Six. Sometime in May 2022, Mr. Ruto's family claimed to have prayed for impure borehole water at their current residence and turned it into clean when a purification machine had failed. We see no difference between this claim and the outrageous ones made by cut pastors like performing fake miracles and extorting money from believers with the calls like Tumambegu ya miatatu kumi or fast until you meet Christ. Seven, the cult leaders are behind the decision by Ruto to establish a faith diplomacy office where he has gone ahead to provide a list of 100 members to be recruited in the Public Service Commission as intercessors supposedly to pray for counties and the government. Nobody knows the identity, the qualifications of the so-called intercessors, how they were identified and where they, they fit in a government where religion and state are separate entities. Eight, Ruto is the leader of the cult movement disguised as Christianity in Kenya. Ruto, Gachagua, and their families must tell Kenyans when and how they knew these cult leaders and what they knew about them. Nine, Ruto and Gachagua must tell Kenyans how much these so-called pastors contributed to their 2022 campaign. How many times have the so-called pastors accessed a state house since the start of this regime? Ten, as we stated at the start, Ruto must know he has no powers to appoint a judicial commission of inquiry, so that option is out. Eleven, we are all aware that judicial commissions of inquiry have been the tool of choice whenever the government has something to hide, like you believe Ruto does now. Twelve, Parliament must swing into action, come up with a select committee, and get to the roots of the cultic activities in the country and the abuse of religion for political gain. Thirteen, Parliament must help us establish whether the deaths at Shakahola were acts of rogue pastors, human sacrifices, or body organ trade, and who the beneficiaries were. Fourteen, 